Portugal. So during the 90s, I was a service engineer installing computer systems, mainly weighing and box end labeling type systems into food factories, mostly chicken factories. Um, during the 90s, there had been a huge increase, I believe, in, in the consumption of chicken. It was considered low fat food and yeah, for a variety of reasons. Um, it became quite popular, so there was a lot of work on. So uh, one Friday, um, I don't know where I was, I was working on a site. I got a phone call from work to say that um, I'd be going to uh, Portugal um, the next day and that I was to uh, meet my manager at home uh, that Friday evening uh, before flying out to Portugal on the Saturday. It was quite an unusual request and it wasn't quite clear why I was meeting him, but um, my understanding was, you know, by the time I came back from site, you know, it would have been after five o'clock and he had a package I had to take to Portugal um, for me. Uh, yeah, so I basically met him on the, uh, I think it was a Friday evening I met him and I was to fly out on the Saturday. So I met him at home on the Friday evening. He had a package for me to take to Portugal. So basically, um, they had problems in Portugal in this particular factory, just outside Lisbon. And uh, the deal was, um, if I if I couldn't fix it with the parts they had, they had to agree um, to open this package. And opening it meant they had to pay for it. <laughs> and for various reasons, uh, and to this day, I'm not quite sure why, it was decided that I should take this package as checked in baggage on my flight to Portugal. Okay, so the box is a wooden crate and it's huge. I don't know if you've ever been to um, see the uh, Tutankhamun sarcophagus in Egypt, but imagine about half the size of that to be fair, a wooden box <laughs> and it was heavy. Um, yeah, it was really heavy. I think it was about 30 kilos, maybe even 50. It doesn't really matter. It was heavy and it was a large wooden crate. So I was told, and I was still quite young at that stage, I suppose, by my manager, listen, you have the company credit card, excess baggage, just take it with you, get there. Don't open it unless you agree to pay for it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> so, uh, as was typical in those days, direct flights were really expensive. So it was very rare to fly direct. I suppose any place I ever flew direct to was Ireland. Um, everywhere else you would go through a hub because connecting flights were cheap. So on this particular occasion, um, I actually can't remember the airport I, I flew through, uh, but I'm. I'm guessing it was probably Sabina Airlines, Brussels, Belgium. I'm not sure. But it took a while to get there. Um, checking in in Manchester was very interesting. Um, I explained to them, I showed them, they could see the size of this crate. So I had a big problem with this crate because I couldn't lift it. You know, I couldn't lift it. I could drop it. <laughs> that was easy. So I got it out the back of the car in, in uh, Manchester Airport and I got it onto a trolley. So it was all gravity uh, work, it was easy, but lifting was a real problem. Anyway, I got onto the trolley, I had a tiny little case of my own. I was only gonna go for a, hopefully a long weekend, a few days. And I got to Manchester Airport, and of course, straight away, it's excess baggage. Um, I had a company visa. And they weighed it, they wanted to weigh it. They had to, um, yeah, they had to get a special scale um, for it. Uh, it looked quite industrial. Um, luckily there was a couple of very strong uh, men to help me. And we weighed it and it was extremely heavy. I think it was 60 kilos, it doesn't matter. Anything over 20 kilos, one person shouldn't be lifting it. And even 20 kilos, that can really hurt you. So that was fine. Um, probably wasn't fine really, it cost I think it was 400 pounds at the time, excess baggage, which was way more than my ticket was costing. Um, but I had the most ridiculous sized box crate you'd ever, oh, it was just stupid now. I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it then. 
So anyway, it was weird, it was checked in, but they said to me, it has to go through a special x-ray machine uh, because it's so big, so you have to take that separately. I said, okay. So I got me ticket and went to the special section of Manchester Airport. And I did see the largest x-ray machine I've ever seen. I think the only ones I've seen bigger, I think I do believe those ones for trucks now in, in ports. Uh, I think they're x-ray machines, they're huge devices that you drive through. But this was like your conventional, you know, conveyor belts with an x-ray, whatever. I couldn't physically lift it onto the belts, but luckily enough, um, we found a way that didn't involve me hurting myself. So it was on there, boom, we x-rayed it. They were happy, and off it went. They put a special sign on it, and they had to put a special sign on it to say that it was a customer's baggage, or customer's luggage, and not to go to the... Uh, <laughs> the logistics uh, warehouse that it was actually some idiot who was taking this to Portugal. Yeah, I was some idiot, all right. So I arrived in Lisbon eventually, um, two flights. Um, I think it was seven or eight hours by the time I got there. You know, it's near enough, it could almost drive it in that time. But anyway, um, I had a problem then, of course. I remember... Um, <laughs> going to the belt in, in Lisbon to collect the package. And it worried me a little bit when I arrived to the baggage reclaim because the baggage, the luggage, the suitcases came from the ceiling down a, um, down a belt and uh, <laughs> they went onto the conveyor and there was like a little barrier at the end of it. So they came, these, this is suitcases. Now these are very light by the way. So they'll come down this belt and they would go whack against this thing and then go around the belt. And I think, yeah, oh my God, 60 kilograms of a wooden crate is gonna come down that belt any minute. And you know what? It did. It really came down the belt and it really hit it with a whack. Thankfully, nothing was broken when it hit the, well, I didn't care if the, if the box was broken, I didn't give two, I didn't care. Luckily, anyway, it managed to land pretty much on the belts and go around and go around the uh, carousel. So I'm standing there and something, I notice something and it's something so silly. As I'm standing, as the belt's going around and I can see the crates in the distance, which is a long way away at this stage, thank God. I look down and I notice, I know it's something nobody would ever see. Whatever baggage you're carrying, whatever golf clubs, rugs, uh, cases, no matter how large or how heavy, I noticed something. I looked down and at the edge of the belt, there was like a stainless steel, a steel edging. There was a lip, a tiny little raised lip. I'm guessing one, two, maybe three millimeters. Doesn't matter. If you've got a suitcase, any baggage, you can, anything, that's not a problem. That two, three minutes, you wouldn't even notice it. Wouldn't even feel it. So the crate's coming towards me. <laughs> and being young, stupid, I grabbed it and tried to pull it onto the thing. And I hit the lip. I couldn't get it over the lip. And luckily enough, there were people around who saw my plight and gave me some assistance. And between about three of us, we got off the belt and onto the trolley. <laughs> it was ridiculous, but it was gonna get worse. So I had it on the trolley and I started to walk away um, towards the arrival section, hopefully to meet uh, my colleague um, from the Dutch company, the Dutch agent that we work with uh, at the time. And as I'm walking along, um, I notice um, the trolley is under some pressure, which is fine. It was still working. It was okay. But then, just towards the arrivals hall, there is a downward slope. And the thing about the downward slope is they've put a surface on the slope. And it was designed so that if you're pushing your trolley with your luggage on, happy as Larry, you're going along, to stop it getting out of hand and stop running away, which is fine. It's all good. Unless, Unless you have a, I don't know what the hell it was, 60 kilograms, let's say 60 kilogram crate on a trolley that's not designed for it. 
And the moment I hit this slope, it stopped. The wheels dug in. It was like trying to run through quicksand. Um, yeah. <laughs>